Does that look like a hamster? Or like a gerbil? There's, look, there's the eye. There's the nose. Oh my... <laughs> there's, the, there's the legs. Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to wear my hat like this because I was walking the dogs earlier. Alright dogs, as I came in and I walked past the mirror I was like... My hat, I mean this is all, it was just almost like that. I just walked my dogs <laughs> like a gnome. What a look. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys have been loving the healthier spin uh, on the Zinger burger I did. The KFC Zinger where we did it three different ways. Actually, some of you actually loved the mushroom bap concept. So much so that I thought we'll go, we'll do another uh, healthy fake away for January. So this is the classic Donna kebab. In fact, kebabs, we kind of do have some history. You might remember this video uh, fairly recently where we did the actual kebab machine thing, which a lot of you got for Christmas. Amazing. That was superb. But we're going to kind of just do a more uh, novelty, homemade, basic one today. So we're going to do it healthier uh, in a couple of different ways. We're going to do a lower fat sauce. Uh, we're going to do our own homemade pita breads as well. But the main thing with kebabs, I was actually kind of thinking, like, why the heck? Is a kebab that unhealthy? I mean, it doesn't strike me as the most unhealthy thing, but apparently they are. Last year, food scientists from Hampshire County Council found that doner kebabs were the fattiest takeaway. I really didn't think that. Uh, one contained 140 grams of fat, twice the maximum daily allowance for women. I'm wearing this t-shirt for a reason, because in that sort of pillar of meat could be any sort of, you don't really, you know it's lamb? in quotation marks, but it could even be like pug meat. No, sorry guys, uh, like T-Rex meat pointed the wrong way. It, it could be anything in there. Plus there's all the fats and the grease that comes in there. They ram the sauces. Apparently it's sauce is one of the worst things with loads of like naughty sugars and fats and salts and things like that. So by making it from scratch, we know exactly what we're putting into it. And we're gonna just do a nice sort of low fat garlicky sauce. In fact, let's do that now. Now with this being my kebab, we're gonna kind of do it the way I wanna do it today, but as we go through it, there's a few hints and tips that I'll give you. So we're gonna make the sauce first, just because it takes about a second to do it and you can keep it cool in the fridge. Okay, so from behind your ear, I've just got myself three garlic cloves and... I love how this hoovers up all the bits of garlic. I mean, you don't have to use a Barry Lewis one, but it's if you want, that's cool. These will be available online. Well, it depends when you watch this very, very soon. I'll post some more info shortly. Everyone's asking about it, I'm like, just wait. So what we've got here is some low fat yogurt, okay? It's a little bit warm, so I'm gonna stick this in the fridge as I say, which will firm it up. It's been sat outside for about 10 minutes. Now I'm a big believer when it comes to the sauce that it's more like a kind of lubricant for the kebab. So as long as we get the flavor in it and tweak it the way we want, it's probably gonna be fresher and taste even better. Now this is actually low fat yogurt, but if you want, you could be a bit cheeky and add in a little bit of mayonnaise, low fat mayonnaise, um, or if you wanna get like a chili vibe, you could add some chili flakes and some sweet chili sauce. Just to, just whatever you want. I'm trying to keep it as fresh and low fat as I can. It's gonna zest in a little bit of lemon. Not too much, we don't wanna overpower it, but it's just gonna take the edge off the yogurt and a freshness really like no other I just love that thing with lemons now just a smidgen of lemon juice now you can tweak it of course yeah like about a teaspoon like that okay and of course an unnecessary distant shot of a pinch of salt salt based style all right so there we go uh, we're just gonna mix all those together I love the colors of the contrast of the pepper popping with the lemon uh, zest there as well and of course we're bringing the garlic up to the surface uh, like a submarine. So this is a bit more maneuverable now, but if we put it in the fridge, which you've of course got time to do, it will stay fresh, it'll firm up a teeny bit, but actually you better taste it first. Ooh, needs more lemon. Needed a bit more pepper. Gotta get it right. But this is what you can do. And if you don't like the taste of yogurt, as I say, you can put the mayo in there. Oh, I like that. Ooh, do I like that? we we'll just bung this in the fridge, and now we'll get our flatbreads going. What are you doing in my fridge? <laughs> Whoop. Okay, so rather than making a, a pita bread, I'll probably do that on a future video, because they balloon up in the oven, it's kind of cool and stuff. One of my ovens is broken, otherwise I'll be doing that at the same time. We're instead gonna make some flatbreads, which we'll fold over. Now, I was gonna do my two ingredient flatbread of Greek yogurt and flour, which is really good, and I might save that uh, if we do a fake away curry, if you want to see that, do let me know. But what I'll do instead uh, is an actually slightly more advanced form of yeast, and we can put more flavours in it, and actually herbs as well, and spices. Mm. So we've got ourselves a big old mixing bowl. It looks way too big at the moment, but we're going to pour in, uh, this is some lukewarm water. So not cold, not boiling hot. It's going to help activate the yeast. You know it's lukewarm because you put your finger in it, and you hear Star Wars noises. See? So what we'll do is add in some sugar. Do -do 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 -do. 
More importantly, this is the uh, fast action yeast. You get them in sachets in the shops. About two teaspoons of this. Now the lukewarm water will get this actually going. We have to leave this, oh my gosh, it smells like beer already. Oh my God. And leave this and it will start to foam and bubble in around about five to 10 minutes. Okay, uh, I've just left this uh, for 10 minutes and I looked at it, I was like, what the heck is going on there? I'm not sure if you can see it, it looked like a mountain. But that is indeed the foamy look that we're after, a few air bubbles there, of course, but it just kind of created, look, loads of mini air bubbles. So the yeast is ready to do its thing. In the background, you can see I just chopped some parsley. We'll come on to that in a bit, but you could use loads of different herbs for this. All right, so I'm pushing in some yogurt here. This is Greek yogurt. And I'm not, I've never really worked out why we do use Greek yogurt for these flatbreads as well. It was a recipe I was sent and I absolutely loved it. Um, but I do know that, um, it's slightly thicker uh, and creamier than other uh, yogurts and it's got more calcium in it so it tends to be quite popular and we also get some olive oil in like so and some salt which I'm not going to do an unnecessary salt bay from a distance we're just going to go like this one of you guys actually told me I activated my yeast and put the salt in at the same time and apparently that kills the yeast so don't do that I did that once in a video and the comments section was full of hate when normally of course my comment section is full of flowers and, and kindness. Uh, it's time to make this wetness a little bit drier because that won't flatbread, will it? I'm knocking the microphone, sorry, if you heard weird noises then. And then we'll also dump in this parsley immediately. And you can tell I filled up my peppercorn tube because I'm putting some pepper in there as well. Love it. So here we go. We mix this all through and there will be a time where we need to knead this through, but at first, let the spoon do the hard work. You can see now how that yogurt mixture has kind of gone into there. Have some extra flour to hand because you're gonna wanna dry this out a little bit before you need it and on your chopping board too. <laughs> I know we're making a kebab, but it probably doesn't feel like it right now. We are, honestly. <sighs> right, getting a little bit of flour down then and then we'll just push this out onto it. Now I can feel that's quite sticky as it is now and we really wanna kind of lose that stickiness. It is very wet, so we will need to add more flour. That's the only thing when we do these sort of yogurt flat bready stuff. Yeah, I can see that sticking to my board. That's how you know. I blooming hate it when it does that. So really do flour it as much as you can. Yeah, that's starting to get a bit more like it now. It does need a darn good flouring, so make sure you get a bit more. Just bring it in on itself. And what you kind of want, actually, is when you touch it, to sort of spring back on itself, which it's starting to do. I think that's enough instructions. I love how when you slice it in the middle, look at all the speckled herbs on it. Um, I've sliced it into four big old pieces. We can always slice it down smaller if you want smaller bits, or once we've let it sort of rest for about 15 minutes. So just into a rough ball uh, on a baking tray line with paper like this. So we're actually gonna leave ours longer than the 15 minutes anyway. I've just put a clean kitchen towel over it. I'm gonna put it to one side. Uh, I'll put it there. Okay, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you just nod. Amazing. Okay, this is for anyone called Donna, because Donna, we are about to make the kebab meat now for you. I'm sure you get that pun a lot, but uh, this is some 5% fat lamb mince, which is actually probably one of the lowest you could probably get. Uh, generally, it's quite a fatty mince anyway, so you get a super lean uh, lamb mince if you want to keep it nice and lammy. I suppose you could do a beef, because you can get some really good lean beef mince as well, which would probably be a teeny bit healthier. Uh, last year, I did a video where you actually stick a bamboo skewer up and thread chicken thighs on and then carve it off. You could do that too, but we're gonna go lamb and we're gonna spice it up. It does look like a little bit like a brain right now, but don't worry. No brain, no gain. We're giving it a darn good scattering of pepper. Unnecessary faraway salt bay. Huh? You like that? So that's your basics in there, really. Now I'm gonna do sort of fairly equal amounts, just scattering on of all these herbs and spices. So that's oregano, some ground coriander. Oh my gosh. Cumin, love cumin. The smell, the waft of it, the tang. Paprika, say no more. Onion granules, garlic granules. And uh, <laughs> Mrs. Barry got some of these ingredients out for me earlier. I can see how she's got the mild chili powder out versus the hot chili powder. So wedding ring off again. Try and use one hand and bring this together as one clumpy mix. I've just realized this isn't going to be a very big kebab, but I mean, it is just for me, really. What I'm going to do is rather than sort of chilling it because you can wrap it, stick it on a skewer, rotate it as we've seen before, or do it like the chicken thing that I did before, and then you carve it off on a, something based like a potato or a lemon down there. I'm just going to be really lazy. Why does that feel like a, something like a hamster? 
Sorry. This is great. With my clean hand, take my strong hand, sweet child, I managed to get my other little loaf tin out of the uh, of the cupboard. So my dirty hand there is just pushing that down. This is cold anyway. I, I would say you'd normally chill it, and that's what you do to really get it to cling on to um, like a, a stick primarily if you are going to do the rotisserie thing. But I'm going to keep this in the fridge just for a short period whilst I get my oven warm. Boom, and wash this. All right, I, I just remembered I had this magnet the other day in another video, so I'm gonna just tell you all the time. So I'm preheating the oven to 180C fan. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, which is 200C uh, non-fan gas mark 6400F. And it can go right here next to my hilarious magnets. Okay, so my oven has just preheated and this is what we're gonna do. I've got a little rack in here, so any fats and juices, uh, it's kind of like we could grill it if we want actually, but I'm gonna oven bake it. We'll still get with the oils in here, uh, the crispiness and brownness on there that you get on a kebab, but I'm hoping that some of the fats will just fall through here. And what we're gonna try and do is use this as a sort of sand castle. Come on, I hope you're gonna come out. Don't be shy. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. That is meatloaf, but out of hell, isn't it? Um, but my, my aim is, <laughs> it's a bit like a terrine. It, it might misshape a little bit, but as it bakes, I wanna try and carve it lengthways like that just to get Madonna meat out, all right? Never done that before. It could fail. I will make Madonna meat out of it somehow, trust me. I can always slice downwards, but this is gonna go in for about half an hour, but we might do it a teeny bit longer depending on the color. So we'll go for 30 minutes initially. Remember, it's quite a hot oven. Good luck in there, my friends. Whilst that's happening, our dough's just sat there. The only other thing I'm gonna do is prep some veg, which you don't really need to see. Uh, so we'll just jump to that being cooked. The smell of that lamb is sensational. It's still got about eight minutes to go and it's getting a lovely color on it. And most importantly for me, the actual brick thing hasn't fallen apart. So that did actually work. Got all our salad bits there, the onion, the lettuce, cucumber, tomatoes. Uh, and of course we've got our sauce that we've already made. One of the flatbread dough balls, what I've just done is rolled it out nice and thin and we're gonna actually fry it in a pan. So I've got myself, of course, the pug pan, uh, just because it's got a nice wider base on it. I wanna sort of really fill this up if I can. So I'm gonna get the pan warm. And you don't have to do this, you can dry fry it, but this is some sort of low fat spray oil. And what we're gonna do is put it in oil side down. Woo! We'll make it fit, just push it down a bit, tuck it down. That's all right. I love the specks of herbs in it. I have spray oiled the top and brushed it again just before we tip, but I don't know if you can see the bubbles starting to form there. Once you see those, that's when you know it's almost time to flip it over. That, and of course, having a little cheeky look to see on the color. Ooh, nice. The kitchen totally smells like a kebab house. I want to flip it like a pancake, but it could still be delicate. Don't want to destroy it. So we will just flip it over manually. So like a spatula underneath like that. Ooh, turn it over. Woohoo! So when it's hot like that and pretty much done, which this one actually is, I've got a glass here and I'm just gonna flip it on like that. So you see how it's got a little bit of a bend in it already. So when it's cold and you try and bend it, as we're doing it now, it's still warm. It's gonna try and be used to that, that bend in it. But you can do that if you microwave it as well. When you reheat it, you can shape it better then. Once it goes cold, it kind of might snap. Ooh, that is looking good. Oh, wow. Look. <laughs> it's like a mini kebab. Oh, oh my gosh. I love how uh, there's so much oil in the, underneath that tray where it's come off. We could push it. You see how that's sort of charred there? A little bit more on the top if we want. We could push that as much as you like. And once you slice it, which we'll do now, you could keep doing that over and over and keep charring it like they do on the spit with a thing. Yeah, so with a serrated sort of bread knife. Oh, this is still hot. Ha. Oh, right-handed slicing. Yeah, ow, ow, ow. Look, you can take off layers of your own kebab meat like that. You can still see how hot this is and keep going down. Instead, because I probably should have used the kilo of lamb just to get a bit more, I'm gonna just do chunky strips like this because let's be honest, it's all cooked through. It smells insane. You're gonna have the charred edges either side and the bottom. Oh, look, kebab meat, this smells so good. Uh, if you're not making it and eating it immediately, try and leave the cooking of this till the very last minute because it can have a tendency to dry out. If you wanna leave it for like 15, 20 minutes, put some foil over it because that'll help it sort of relax a little bit too, but also keep it warm. Okay folks, so rather than building it up for a change, I thought I'd just bring it all in, my epic kebab. Look at that lovely flatbread there. Uh, I've put a skewer in it just to hold it in place. 
because I might have made it too big. So if I just take this out, because <laughs> I want to get a bit more sauce in, uh, oh my gosh, just like let it rain on there. But we've got the red cabbage in there, we've got the kebab meat, in fact lettuce, donna kebab, red cabbage, tomatoes, cucumber, onion, more kebab meat, and then under that is another cheeky layer uh, of the sauce in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. When you bring it over like that, I have put a skewer in there just to hold it down in place just for a bit so I can like get my hands free. <laughs> well, that is a phenomenal size kebab, but I suppose it's healthier so you can eat it. And um, should we do that? This is absolutely <laughs> gigantic. Oh, I think I'm gonna halve it. Yeah, that's better, but it's still, look at the size of that. <laughs> Mrs. Barry's lunch. Mm. Oh. The meat is tender, perfect. Mmm. Oh, there is so many like layers or levels. Is that what the cool kids say? Yeah, levels, man. There is so much going on here. The colours, the texture, the taste, the freshness, the moisture of that meat. That's really caught me by surprise. I really like that side to it. The sauce, you don't even tell that it's low-fat yogurt. It just kind of all blends in. The lemon zing just kind of takes that edge off it. Tasting it on its own separately, you'd be like, it needs mayo. If you have to do that, do that. But when it's all combined together like that, with the freshness of the vegetables, the meat as well, and the fresh kebab, oh! So I'm a bit excited. Mm. Yeah, it's the freshness of the flatbread as well. It just does it, just, oh, wow. Just simply stonking. Uh, if you haven't seen the healthier KFC Zinger Burger yet, do check that video out. And if you've got any other ideas, do let me know below. I am gonna try and squeeze in another healthy fake away video uh, for January, but it's a little bit cliche, isn't it? The whole thing with January of like, oh yeah, we must all be fit in January. And then we've done it for the rest of the year. Like, yeah, I'm all right now. I might carry it on if you guys wanna see that uh, from time to time. Don't forget to subscribe for at least two videos per week. Follow me on social media for all behind the scenes updates and all bits and bobs. And maybe consider becoming a patron. See you again next time. Bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 